Hey y'all, well, there's a lot of cool things that are happening in the Appalachian Trail community this week. So we got through hikers that are reporting in, trail days, all kind of neat stuff going on out there. We're gonna bring that to you right now. So let's talk about trail days for just a brief minute. To begin with, thanks a lot to everybody at trail days that came out, came up to me and said, hey, how you doing? I had a chance to just uh, talk to the uh, trail community and my followers and subscribers and, and people like that out there. So uh, greatly enjoyed doing that, talking to each and every one of you. Uh, there's too many names out there for me to name. I'll leave somebody out except for one. Uh, but uh, it was thanks a lot for all that. Anybody that took selfies with me, I had my hands full, so I couldn't reciprocate that. But please send those selfies to me. Uh, and uh, I want to include those in uh, just the stuff I have, my pictures and everything uh, that I kind of keep an archive of. But thanks a lot. Just love trail days. It's always a hoot. Uh, first time I've been to the hiker parade. <laughs> Appreciate you. Woo hey. Hey, appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you. Hey, that was neat uh, and uh, just had a great time. The one person that I will give a huge shout out to, and that is Back Scratcher. So, Back Scratcher uh, comes from somewhere north, one of the, like several states away uh, from Damascus. And Back Scratcher, you know, had put out a couple weeks ago, uh, maybe even a month ago, that hey, they've torn down the over mountain barn. Somebody had sent me a picture of a pile of wood there that they had left over, and I don't know why they left it there at the site. Maybe they were leaving it for firewood, I don't know. But anyway, I asked if anybody was gonna be in that area, if they could bring me a piece of that wood. I'd like to have a little memento from the Over Mountain Shelter that the ATC and the Forest Service and the local trail club there decided uh, they didn't wanna fool with it anymore, or didn't have the resources, whatever. Uh, doesn't matter, I know, I know there's a lot of people out there saying, oh, we couldn't rebuild it. Well, bull hockey on that, doesn't matter. It's down, gone, but I want a piece of that wood. Well, Back Scratcher came from a couple states away, made the 12 mile track in there to that pile of wood and brought me my very own piece of the Over Mountain Shelter. It's got the, the red paint on it and it's even got a nail in it. That is so awesome. Now, one of the reasons probably I've determined after getting this piece of wood that maybe it was falling apart is because if you can look at that right there, you see, behind me see how deep that nail goes in the wood that is not a lot of purchase that that nail has got so this was a piece of the siding up there but in any case that's not not enough uh depth for that nail there to catch on anything anyhow thanks a lot back scratcher that means the world to me one that you just go in there and do it and two that i actually got my very own piece of the over mountain shelter so thanks a lot back scratcher greatly appreciate you doing that now let's get on to what's going on out there with the through hikers so we got night shift he has made it out of the whites uh, and into southern maine so that is awesome uh, he is on his calendar year triple crown so he's trying to do all three uh the cdt the at and the pct and he's on the at right now trying to do all of those in the same calendar year there's three other folks that are doing that as well uh, but he's the only one that is stayed on the at the rest of them have flipped out to the CDT without trying to finish the AT. I asked him a couple weeks ago, what are you gonna do? You know, he's already in Maine, so obviously he's gonna get there before Katahdin opens. What are you gonna do when you get there and they haven't opened Katahdin for the summit? He said, he's gonna take a vacation. So we'll see if that's what happens. But uh, in any case, uh, he did send me this photo here showing me some of the snow that he's been post holing through uh, coming down Mount Moriah. Uh, in the last 4,000 peak there in the whites, uh, he said it was four feet of snow to the very bitter end. Uh, so, and he had a picture of the Mahoosic Notch. It didn't come through, but he said it was covered in four to six inches, I'm sorry, four to six feet of snow. 
and that's supposed to be the hardest mile on the AT, and that's when it doesn't have snow on it. I can't imagine uh, what it's like to be out there with the snow. But anyway, keep on trucking night shift. Jeff and Micaiah, they are through the Smokies, and they send in this vid. Hey, Ramdino. Jeff and Micah here, husband and wife team, hiking northbound. We left on March 25th from Springer Mountain. We've had a few snags along the way that slowed us down a bit, but uh, all is well now. We are through the Smokies, uh, taking right. a week off to go see the new grandbaby. Then we'll be back at it in a week. You can find us on YouTube at Jeff and Micah Adventures. Thanks for keeping us all informed. Nichols, he has been through the lemon squeezer. Uh, so he says he definitely felt like a lemon being squeezed. It kind of looks more like a cheese grater to me. Uh, but in any case, he says he should be in Connecticut today. So today's Sunday, and this is when we put our videos out. So he said that he should be in Connecticut today after going through that. Also, he's got a new Instagram account out there since he joined uh, my support list. I have went and updated that, but it is Nichols on Trail, all one word out there if you want to go and give him a shout out. Sweet Potato, she is through the Triple Crown and sends in this video. So I came out earlier today in the fog, in the mist. It was all sucked in. And now the storm has cleared, the clouds have lifted, and it's a beautiful view. Time out. He is round the Rhone Mountains, Highland. Hey Ramdino, this is Time Out from Julia's Time Out, and I just wanted to bring you some trail conditions here. Um, I am about two miles from Sam's Gap. I did a Spivey to Sam's today, and um, this trail and this whole area from Devil's Fork, Spivey, Sam's, uh, is just phenomenal. The Carolina Mountain Club, they just do an amazing job. So thank you so much for all the hard work. Um, that the Carolina Mountain Club does for this whole area because I think they have quite a large section in here. That being said, the trails in here around the Irwin area are super busy still with hikers. Um, I'm heading southbound slack today. Um, I had slack packers. I had through hikers probably 25 to 30 in the 13 miles that I've done today. So it is still very, very busy in this area. And um, just wanted to give you that little trail update. Everybody's trying to get into town before the rains start tomorrow. And I hope everybody is safe and gets off trail. And uh, so thanks again and happy trails, everybody. Peace. Slow and steady, he is somewhere around the central New York area and he sends in an update video. Hey, Ram Dino and everyone watching, yeah, watching your channel. Thanks for everything you do. Uh, slow and steady here. I'm in the uh, middle of New York. Uh, a few PSAs, if anyone tells you the rocks ever end, they don't yet. Uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, at least halfway through, are rocky. They just change a little, but it's tough. New York is, first half of New York is difficult. It's slow going. Appreciate, appreciate everything you do, Ram Dino. Uh, anyone wants to see how I got here, where I'm going, uh, check out Hiking with Slow and Steady on YouTube. And uh, I'll keep... Uh, Trying to do some PSA announcements. It's a very difficult week for me, physically, emotionally. I won't go into detail here and use up all Ram Dino's time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. He also sent in this picture of a bear. He's taking a looking at a bear that's looking back at him. So I don't know if he was in camp somewhere, and maybe that bear's waiting for him to go to sleep. But that bear looks especially like he is waiting for uh, for slow and steady's attention to be diverted somewhere else and he's making a run for that food bag there no russian chop chopstick they have made it through the triple crown they both have lost a pretty good bit of weight uh looks like uh, no rush is lost somewhere around 35 pounds uh shadow has made it into harper's ferry he was number 202 uh on his bag tag at amicalol uh, state park and he is number 157 when he got to harper's ferry Master Splinter, he has made it uh, past the knife's edge there in Pennsylvania, and he was uh, help looking for the lost dog, Lizzie, a uh, German Shepherd that got lost up there. We'll be having some more information on that uh, here in just a little bit. Uh, Inchworm is reporting in from the Pinnacle that is just east of Port Clinton. Uh, he's about two weeks in from his start of his flip-flop there at Harper's Ferry. He's hit his 200-mile uh, mile mark. And he says the mornings are going well, just nursing a few blisters. 
Wolfman, he has made it to past the halfway mark. Congratulations to him. Matt Hermit, he checked in and is working his way through Northern Virginia and sends in this video. I'm Dino, it's Matt Hermit checking in with you from the top of Taylor Mountain. There's no view right now because the sun hasn't broken through. Uh, but it's the morning of Thursday the 16th and uh, I should be to Glasgow in a couple of days. Thanks again for all you do. Daisy's joined us now. Uh, so Stick the Eagle, he is in New Jersey, sends in this great uh, video here that's got a lot of trail information for you. Hey Ram Dino, it is Stick the Eagle here. We are three miles short of the New York border right now. We'll be crossing into New York for the last time. The trail has been following the border for the last 20 miles or so between New Jersey and New York. One thing I'm finding interesting is that a lot of the days, because you can't stealth camp or have you don't have campsites between shelters in New Jersey or much of New England, so you have to plan like a 12 or a 16 mile day or like a 24 to 28 mile day, which in New Jersey I'm finding it's a lot harder to do because there's deeper climbs, it's rocky. It's a 25 mile a day is harder in New Jersey than it is in Virginia. And I've been learning that. So it's kind of hard to do 25 and get to the next shelter, but it is what it is. I'm also struggling with old shoes. I've been having the same shoes since Georgia. So I'm trying to find new shoes. So I might have to take a few days off to make that work. Anyway, thought I'd note that a lot of short days or long days here as we get north of New Jersey. Happy trails, keep trekking northbound. Yep, that can be a problem, finding that happy medium between shelters and campsites and stuff. I mean, I'm good for about 16 miles, but you know, if, if I get to a shelter uh, or a campsite, a lot of times I want to, and I've got plenty of daylight, especially if I'm hiking in the summer, I might want to hike a few more miles, but you know it may be 10 more miles to the next shelter so i'm not one for getting in at four and sitting around for five hours of daylight so i like to keep hiking but sometimes you know that's all you can do is just go somewhere for me turning a six mile 16 mile day into 25 mile day is just a bit much for me so uh, appreciate that video stick the eagle he did say that he has been experiencing a little bit of an unexpected bubble since he's got past Harper's Ferry. So lots of people out there, flip-floppers have gotten on the trail. You've also got section hikers out there. So he has, he went from hardly anybody being in a shelter south of Harper's Ferry, and sometimes they were empty and he was the only one there, to now sometimes he's not even uh, able to have a place in the shelter. Uh, he is staying in his tent, which I stay in my tent all the time anyway, unless it's raining. Uh, and I don't want to deal with the rain and everything else. But, but in any case, uh, that's what's going on with Stick the Eagle. Gear Magnet and Landline, they have made it past the 1600 mile mark and they are in Vermont. So they are averaging a little more than 20 miles a day right now. Uh, they started back in uh, on February 11th and they anticipate finishing June 20th. They, they, they say that their feet are hurting, but they are pushing through. They send in this video. Hey, Ram Dino, this is Gear Magnet. And Landline. We're in Vermont, mile marker 1633. Just checking in with you. Um, weather's been nice. Um, we got rained on for two days a few days ago, but. Not real bad. No, we're doing good now. We actually stayed at the best campsite so far in Cheshire, Massachusetts. It was Father Tom's campsite. And we have bikes, got to ride at Dollar General. Super nice spot. Just, Recommend just, it. If anybody's, you know, watching and they're hiking, plan on stopping there. Yes. Nice yeah. resupply, plenty of water, uh, really nice toiletry. Yep. Uh, plenty of plug-ins. Right. And, and flat ground. Yep. And then as soon as you head out of there, you start going up the mountains. So we're shooting for 20 plus a day and hopefully being at Katahdin in June. And wish everybody luck gets behind us. If you'd like to follow us, we're at Jeff Long and Gavin on YouTube. So that is all the folks that are on trail that reported in. A lot of people that uh, that are on trail I met at Trail Days. Huge 2024 contingency that was walking through uh, the crowd there, um, walking through the, uh, the the hiker parade. And a bunch of you in the middle of the parade came up and, and spoke to me and took selfies. So that was awesome for y'all to come out and do that. Uh, so... 
but in any case, uh, really, really neat to see everybody out there. And so, um, but that's the reason why we don't have as many people reporting in as we normally do on, um, from the 2024 uh, folks out there. So we do have a finisher and that is Bright Eyes. So Bright Eyes, of course, is Sadie's mom. We'll talk a little bit more about Sadie, uh, her lost tiger dog, lost child for all intents and purposes uh, out there on the trail. They've still not been found, but Bright Eyes did finish uh, her triple crown uh, and it was uh, bittersweet due to the loss of Sadie. Uh, and she, you know, that she still hasn't found. We're not calling a loss right now. We're still believing we're gonna find Sadie. But anyway, she did finish it um, at uh, Springer and I think she went on down. She did go on down to Amicola Falls State Park and, and did the approach trail. And uh, she is on the AIT actually. So the AIT is the International Appalachian Trail and it starts up in Newfoundland. Pretty sure I pronounced that right. You Canadian Canucks can tell me if I pronounced it wrong or right. But up around Newfoundland and Labrador and goes all the way to Springer. Uh, so that, that completes her triple crown of CDT to PCT. And she's done a lot more trails than that. But that was, um, that was the completion of the triple crown for her on the AIT. And uh, I'll be having, you know, I've got a three-part series. I've already done one part of her story and, uh, with Sadie. And I'll be doing the rest of those uh, coming up here in the next week or so. Uh, right now, I've got some technical problems at home. We had a terrible storm move through here and blew out TVs and modems and routers. And so still in the process of recovering, I still have to go away from the property here in order to get a signal uh, to update. So I'm, I'm getting a little behind on a lot of stuff. But in any case, I am getting this out. So nothing's too good for you folks out there on a Sunday afternoon. Back to Bright Eyes O. Uh, she, like I said, she finished and did the approach trail and she sends in this video. Her Facebook channel, I'll leave a link to that down below. I hope you'll send her uh, just a, a quick note and just let her know how you're feeling about that, about congratulate her on her hike, but also just letting her know, you know, about your prayers and wishes and stuff for her and for her and Sadie. Uh, and then we did have uh, a hiker that reported in and that is Livewire is getting off the trail. So Livewire's done, he had some injuries. And so he is not gonna be able to complete his trail. But what's really cool is I uh, saw him at trail days and he had actually picked up some hikers and brought them to trail days. So he's been doing some trail magic and stuff out there. And, and, and that seems to happen on a regular basis that folks get off trail due to injury or whatever. And they wind up doing, becoming a trail angel and doing trail magic for the people that are coming behind them. So very cool live wire. And thanks for letting me know about that. Uh, you folks out there, I appreciate your support that folks give me, whether it be a comment or a thumbs up or a, subscri a subscription or really sharing this channel. That really helps out a lot because this channel is all about you, the community, about building that community. And that's how we build a community is we share it with folks. So it's not about me, it's about you guys and the information that you put in, that you send in to me every week and about the through hikers and, and the support that you give them uh, each week, each year vis-a-vis uh, -vis this channel so thanks a lot for doing that uh, and thanks a lot for sharing that and then of course uh, you also purchase merch through my merch channel thank you for doing that that supports the channel uh, and then we also had a super thanks from Julia J so thanks a lot for doing that Julia J that, that just thrills my soul when people do that because it, it tells me that's a tangible way of them showing me that they believe in my mission and just uh, in and, and what this channel's about. And then of course, uh, also if you're a Patreon member out there, and we did have a new Patreon member uh, this past week, and that was Janine from Arkansas. So thanks a lot, uh, Janine, for becoming a Patreon member, and just greatly appreciate that. So we got some news out there, like I was talking about with Sadie. Uh, so Sadie is still missing. At this point, it has gone to an internet search. So if you're somebody out there um, who could get involved with that or already involved, uh, looking for Sadie uh, online in different Facebook groups. So the found dogs and the shelter groups that are out there anywhere from Tennessee to Atlanta. Uh, we feel like that possibly she was abducted uh, because we've been all over the Walnut Mountain and all over the area where she was lost and uh, I mean literally bushwhacking trails, logging roads, pretty much everywhere you can go and 
here's kind of graphical depiction of where all we've been. Everything that's highlighted is places that we've been. And of course, we didn't highlight the bushwhacking, but a lot of bushwhacking has been done too and just have not seen any sign of her or her uh, fluorescent green pack that, you know, if she was attacked by animals that maybe that would have gotten ripped off her or something. So uh, we feel like she's abducted. Also, we feel like there were some credible sightings of her at the NOC in Gatlinburg and at the NOC in Wesser where it crosses there at the Nantahala River. Uh, so if you're somebody out there and you know employees at either one of those places and you could uh, beg them to look at their security footage during the day and see if Sadie came through there, we have a uh, credible eyewitness that uh, she may have been around the picnic tables at one of those places and being petted. And then, of course, uh, the, the, uh, the NOC there at Wesser has a camera, my understanding is it's trained on the bridge coming across the Nantahala River, so she would have had to come across that bridge uh, to continue on the trail, whoever abducted her, if they continued across there. So if you know some employees there, they'd be willing to go through uh, their security footage from, you know, during the day, obviously, from the last week in March to maybe the second or third week in April. Uh, we would greatly appreciate that. And then also, if you're looking at other hiker videos out there, YouTube or pictures on Instagram, and you see a black dog in the background, send those to me, uh, send those to Bright Eyes. Um, and uh, we, there's a Facebook page we have set up for the search for Sadie. You can send it to that. Uh, make a post on there and myself or anybody else that has been helping out will go and look and compare that to see if that is Sadie. Uh, Sadie, of course, has a gray muzzle, some white. Uh, her paws are white, a white patch on her rear end, and a very distinguishable uh, large mass on her back left hind leg uh, that you can't miss if you see her or see that in a picture somewhere or on a video or something. But send those to us. We'll be glad to look at that. Appreciate everybody's help out there uh, that's been helping. We also had a miss, uh, another missing hiker dog, a German Shepherd uh, up in Pennsylvania, and that was Lizzie. And she just all of a sudden went missing. And uh, my understanding is she just bolted out in the woods. Don't know if she got scared or whatever, uh, but she has been missing. And thankfully she has been found. So she went missing uh, sometime last week or this week rather. And she was found yesterday. So that is awesome. Apparently she got back on trail, started hiking south. Uh, and this was told to me by a master splinter who is hiking out there with, uh, with his uh, dog. And, um, and uh, he was friends and had been hiking with him. My understanding is, and that the, uh, the Lizzie's um, uh, fur father said that she just bolted in the woods and left and then apparently she got scared and there was a huge search for her but they didn't find her for a couple days but apparently she found her way back to the trail and uh, started walking south. Some hikers came across her and because she was in a lot of Facebook groups and stuff on the Appalachian Trail groups for 2024, they knew, recognized her, got her to the lookout hostel in Pennsylvania and they contacted her dad and and got and reunited with her. So thanks a lot for everybody that joined in that and was a part of that. That's awesome to see that uh, reunification and hopefully we can do the same thing for Bright Eyes uh, with Sadie. Whispers, our Northern correspondent, he says that the Cog Railway going up to Mount Washington in the Whites there in New Hampshire is open and so, and also so, so is the road. He also reported in about the body of the man uh, who was found as a hiker that was found there in the Crawford Path trailhead or, or near the Crawford Path trailhead there. He was found in the dry river wilderness. Apparently he was found um, by some hikers reporting his jacket and his gear in the river. And so that kind of, wherever that was, search and rescue was reported, searched upstream and it wasn't too far upstream and they found him in the river, apparently up underneath a boulder. So somehow he had gotten in the river and drowned, fell in it. That's a very treacherous area, my understanding is. And there's not a lot of people that hike that area because it's so treacherous. So somehow he got uh, off the trail up there uh, and, and, got in the, and got in the river and drowned. Possibly due to high winds or the adverse weather they'd gone through there, somewhere between Mount Monroe and Mount Eisenhower. 
uh, during his hike up there. So uh, according to Whispers, this is probably the place that has the, this dry wilderness area has the most deaths per capita of any other wilderness area uh, in the US. Uh, so apparently it just looks like we had a, a hiker that got in there and didn't look at the weather, wasn't prepared, something like that. But nature uh, can turn on you as gorgeous as nature is and the creation that God created. Unfortunately, it can turn on you in a heartbeat. And so you've got to be prepared, got to look at the weather, got to know where you're going when you're out there, got to have the right equipment. And so folks, just keep that in mind uh, when you're out there. Uh, Whiskey Hikes, he ran into several nobos this week, and he said uh, that Hot Sauce and Flying Scroll reported to him that the norovirus uh, has made it to Virginia, and that he had seen several U.S. Forest Service notices posted in the Mount Rogers area about the norovirus. He had camped at the Scales, which is an area there in the middle of a Mount Rogers Grayson Highlands section of the trail, uh, where it's a, it's a corral, basically, where they uh, bring in horses and check their health and things like that, the horses, of the ponies that are up there. And it's called scales. And there had been some noroviruses posted there. Uh, so uh, just be careful. I've put out a video before uh, about the, the norovirus and what you can do to avoid the norovirus. And so a lot of times the norovirus, uh, people that think they have the norovirus, they actually had Giardia from not filtering their water. So they can kind of be the same. You got it coming out both ends, basically. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, always filter your water. You know, maybe if you're right at the source, uh, that might be a little different. I know my hiking partner come along, doesn't filter at the source. I always filter. It doesn't take that much longer to filter. Uh, but in any case, be careful while you're up there. So bear update. We got the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. They have closed Russell Russell Field Shelter, and that is mile marker uh, Nobo 181. So it has been closed due to bear activity. Apparently, a food condition bear damaged a tent. Uh, so hikers should avoid this place altogether. So the trail runs really close to it. So just keep on hiking when you go by there, not stopping here for breaks or to eat or anything. And then also Molly's Ridge Shelter, which is right before that, is uh, mile marker 178 they have put out a bear caution for that shelter. Uh, so be careful in there. Uh, and then uh, there's another shelter, I believe, that's on the, the, uh, the northern side. Can't remember the name of it right now, but it has been closed going through the Smokies as well. So uh, I put that out in a video a while back, but just be careful up there. If it's closed, you need to stay away from it because there's a bear that's getting people's food and, and has been habituated to food and has been habituated to people and is not leaving the area by being scared off. So keep that in mind when you're up there. And then we've also got a bear report there at the Clyde Smith shelter, and that's mile 1,370 along the North Carolina, Tennessee border. So hikers reported a bear sniffing tents. Uh, it's not, the shelter's not closed, uh, but the bear did not access hiker food, but he, and he ran away Hiker's making a bunch of noise, but he did come back. So it's just a matter of time before that bear gets habituated as well. We want to do everything we can to avoid, avoid habituating bears. So put your food and your smelly stuff up. Um, you know, keep it away. Keep it in the tree at night. Uh, keep it uh, on the cables. If they're bear cables, if in their box, use the box. You know, keep that away because a habituated bear uh, they typically will try to remove it, but a lot of times they come back and if the bear does any, any type of harms any person or, or, or even comes close to harming them, like we had a bear last year at Davenport Gap, took a swipe at a person. They were fine. I, don't, I think they did require stitches, but it wasn't a, like a mauling or anything, but they had to kill that bear. So that's tragic. So we don't want to kill bears. So... You know, if you're the person out there who didn't hang their bear bag and that caused that was the final straw that broke the bear's back and now the bear's habituated, that bear has to be put down, that's on you. And all the other hikers that didn't put their food up that came through there and caused that bear to get habituated. So, you know, let's, let's keep God's creatures from being shot and having to put down. We're in their area. Yes, we're humans. We're, we should be able to go in that area as well. 
uh, but we don't need to go in there and be causing bears to be habituated in, in that area. So just keep that in mind, folks. Uh, folks, uh, again, greatly enjoyed trail days and everybody coming up to me. Thanks a lot doing that, and it was just a real hoot out there, and uh, look forward to doing it all over again. Folks, that's all I got this week. As always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out here.